and welcome to this Design Cuts video tutorial. Today we're going to be creating duo tones in Photoshop. As usual, the photos are coming from Design Cuts assets and all my photos today are from the 100 High Res Photographs Collection Volume 1 from Moonloop. Now duo tones have their history in the printing industry because it's expensive to use color printing. And so what you might do is have a spot color throughout a publication, such as a newsletter for example, and you would use the spot color along with black to add some color to your photographs. And so there are a couple of ways of creating duotones. One is the more traditional way that actually looks at those two colors and puts them into the photograph and it works on a grayscale image. The other way is a little less of a traditional method, but it has great results. And given that we're probably not going to be printing these, on a printing press. We're probably going to be using these images for web and other sort of just basic inkjet printing. Then you can get away with not using the traditional method if you prefer the other one. But let's hit the traditional method first. So we're going to choose image mode and then grayscale because we have to work with a grayscale image to be able to get access to this duotone option here. At the moment it's grayed out because our image is color, even though it doesn't have a lot of color in it, it's not a grayscale image. So I'm gonna click here on grayscale and I'm gonna to click to discard the color information. A word of warning here, if this is an original image, you want to undo this and go back and save your original image somewhere safe and only be working on a copy because once we discard this color information, it's not coming back. So just be aware that you should be working on duplicate images. Next, we'll choose image and then mode and duotone to get to the duotone dialog. And you'll see the duotone that you last created. And if you didn't ever create one, it's going to be black and white. I'm gonna hold down the Alt key, that would be Option on a Mac, and that turns this Cancel button here into a reset, so I can just reset my dialog and get back to what it was. Now, the default here is a monotone one color, and it happens to be black. We want a duotone, so I'm gonna click Duotone, that opens up two color boxes. Now, we don't have white ink anyway, and we may not want to use black because there's no rule that says your duotone has to be made up of black and another color. In fact, most of the duotones that you're seeing right now are really punchy colors, colors that go really well together like dark green and a navy blue or yellow and red. So don't be afraid to really hit your images with some decent color. I'm going to do just that. So I'm going to click here on this color option and I'm going to go and select a red, sort of ready orange as one of my colors. And then I'm going to select a yellow. So I'll click here and let's go and get a yellow. Now, if your color picker doesn't look like mine and you want it to look like mine, just be aware that it's this H button here that's controlling how the color picker looks. The color picker is going to have all the colors in it regardless of what it looks like, but each one of these options changes how it's laid out. I happen to prefer this one where your hue is down here, so you select your hue and then look in here for your tints and shades. So I have a yellow selected, I'll click OK. And right now we have our duotone as a sort of insipid orange. It's a mix of these two colors, but neither of these colors is actually doing much work at all on their own. Well, to solve that problem, we can attack these curves. So there's a curve for each of these colors. It's a straight line right now, which is why we're getting this sort of somewhat blah result. So I'm going to click on this to open up the duotone curve. Now, if you've used curves in Photoshop before, you probably have it set up so that the lights are over here and the darks are over here. Just a word of warning, this curve dialog is right the other way around. So just be aware that your darks are over on the right hand side, lights on the left, a little bit unusual. I'm gonna cancel out of here because I know I've got a problem with these trees. Less so in the sky. What I wanna make sure is that whatever I do with this duo tone, I get a little bit of detail in this area and right now I'm not seeing it. So let's go to the yellows with our curve. And what I'm gonna do with this is put it into the lighter areas of the image. So I'm gonna drag upwards on the curve. So I'm starting to put some yellow in these lighter areas. Now I can pick up this corner node here and lift it up should I wish to do so. 
So I'm just creating a curve that is enhancing the yellow in the image. Hasn't helped this area at all. Now you can drag on the curve yourself or you can just put numbers in here. I think you'll probably find that it's easier to drag on the curve. You'll probably want to avoid turning the curve in on itself because that gives you unreal results. But you know what, if you like it, go for it. It's just that usually curves are supposed to be a smooth line and they're not supposed to have bends in them. I'm going to be a little bit more traditionalist here and just go for a curve that looks like this. So that's the yellows. Let's see what we can do with the reds. So I'm just going to click and drag on this curve line and see what I can do. Well, going up slightly in the lights and then bringing this curve down a little bit in the darker areas is starting to get me some texture in here. And that's what I really want to see. Now, if you need to get rid of one of these anchor points, just grab it and just take it off the edge and it will just disappear. It's very easy to get excess points. So I'm just going to tweak this until I get a result that I like. And having attacked the reds, you can go back and have another go at the yellows. When you're done, click OK. Now you won't be allowed out of this dialog until you name your colors. You can name them whatever you like, but they just have to be named. And that's a traditional printing requirement. So I'm just calling mine red and yellow. I'm just going to click OK. So there is one duotone effect using red and yellow in the image. And it's done using the duotone option. Now, if you want to edit this, you can do so. But you'll need to do image and then mode and click duotone to get this dialog back. And these are your settings, so you can obviously make changes to them. You can also save this if you wanted to use it over again. Just click this icon here and save this as a preset. Now there are lots of presets also in this list, so you could use one of these. So in fact, some of them are actual tritones or quadtones, so they'll have three or four colors in them, and many of them are just duotones. So you can experiment by selecting any of these and just seeing what sort of result you get. Well, this is a more classic duotone with black and blue. Here's one with cyan. So there's lots of experimentation that you can do with this duotone dialogue, making duotones the more traditional way. If we have a look at the layers palette, you'll see that everything is just baked into that image. There are no adjustment layers, no effects that you can sort of turn on or turn off. This is what you get. So now, as promised, let's have a look at another way of creating duotones. I have another copy of this image. This method of creating duotones has a lot of flexibility built into it. What we're going to do is we're going to use a gradient map adjustment layer. So I'll choose layer, new adjustment layer, and then choose gradient map. I'll click OK. The default gradient here is a black to white, exactly the same colors as I have here in my color picker. But if I click on this option, I'm able to get access to gradients that I have open in this gradient editor. If you don't have lots of gradients here, click this little icon here and you can go and add the gradients that are shipped with Photoshop. So you'll just select the gradient and if you want to add them to your current collection, click Append. I've got plenty of gradients here, so I'm just going to go with what I have. And one of the gradients that I really like is this orange to navy one. So I'm just going to click on it. But I want to make a duplicate of it so I don't disturb this copy, so I'm going to click New and that will give me a duplicate of it down here. Now, it needs a bit of editing because it's the wrong way around for a start. It would be better if the darker color, the navy color, was actually mapped onto these trees. So what I'm going to do is just start pulling this blue across and just pull it away from this area here. Because what I want to do is bring this color over to that end. So I'm just going to move it across and move this one across here. Now it's going to be a little bit easier for us to discuss what's actually happening here. So what a gradient map is, is a gradient, in this case, navy blue to orange. And it's being mapped onto the tones in the image. So the colors at this end of the gradient, the navy blue, are being mapped onto the darkest tones in the image. And the oranges are being mapped onto the lighter tones of the image, the sky, for example. 
and we've got just a straight navy to orange gradient with the midpoint, the point where it's equally orange as it is navy, is right in the middle. But if you click on one of those points, you actually have them selected so you can see this little midpoint indicator, you can actually drag it around. So you could take it towards the navy end and what you're doing is you're adding oranges into not just up to the mid-tones in the image but also into some of the shadow areas and you can see it happening around here we already knew these were darker areas of the image from the work that we did with the other duotone method well what we're doing now is pulling oranges into there and so we're able to add detail into this otherwise very dark area of the image so you can tweak how the colors are mapped onto this image by just dragging this little slider. Now I'm going to do something that is probably going to be what's going to happen to you because it happens to me all the time, is that you click on this line and all of a sudden you've got a stop in the middle here and you didn't really want it. Well just grab that stop and just drag it off the sort of panel here and it will disappear. Now reselect one of these stops, it doesn't matter whether it's the one on the left or the right, just click on it and now you can get access to this midpoint adjuster so you can alter where the gradient trips from sort of being orange into starting to be blue. So now that we've got some colors in our gradient, there's some other techniques that we can use because we're working for a start on a color image. And secondly, because we can put something underneath this duotone to actually punch the image up. Well, first of all, I'm gonna select the background layer. I'm gonna do a black and white conversion. So I'm gonna choose layer, new adjustment layer, black and white. Now the reason why I'm looking at a black and white adjustment is it allows me to take color in the underlying image for example greens and walk them towards darker areas or walk them towards the light. So we know that there's some green in this part of the image. So here is the green slider. If I take it to the right, I'm going to lighten the green areas in the image. If I've taken it to the left, I'm going to darken those green areas. So I can find where, for example, image content like this is on the color scale and make it lighter or darker. Now, some of these colors are going to appear in the image and some of them won't. So you can just walk these sliders around to just see where your colors are and what you can do with them. So this is the cyan's, likely to be perhaps in the sky a bit, maybe the blue in the sky. You just test out and see what sort of effect you can create in sort of tweaking the darks and lights in the image in terms of what the colors are. So while the gradient map itself just went blue in the dark areas, orange in the light areas, here you have control over what is a dark area and what is a light area and you can change them around. Depending on the image, you might get more or less of a result using this black and white adjustment. Certainly an image that has a lot of color in it, you're gonna get a lot of result with that. Now you can also use curves. So let's go and put a curves adjustment in here as well. Layer, new adjustment layer, curves. Click OK. Now this is our more traditional curve where we've got darks on this side and lights on this side. Well, you can lighten the lighter areas of the image and you can darken the darker areas of the image, add a bit more contrast into the midtones and sort of tweak your curve this way which is going to have an impact on how the gradient map is mapped onto your image. The other thing that you can do is you could dodge and burn your original image. So I've got my original image here. I can use the dodge and burn tools. So let's go and get the dodge tool which is going to lighten the areas of the image. I'm going to make sure my brush is well it's a circular brush and it's got no hardness on it that's a good sort of brush to use just going to use my closed square bracket to make it a bit bigger i want it to work on what i think are going to be the mid-tones i think these are probably going to be mid-tones down here i want a really low exposure probably something like four percent and that might be too much and what I'll do is just come in here and start brushing over these areas. And what that's doing is it's lightening this area of the image because dodge is a lightening effect. And what I can do by lightening this is bring some more of this orange color into these areas. And you've got likewise the burn tool here. And the burn tool is going to darken areas. So if you've got an area that is overly light, well, you can burn onto the original image. Again, just make sure that 
you're selecting the area you want to burn, well that in this case would be highlights, make sure that your exposure is really, really low because this tool can just destroy your image really, really quickly. And then just brush over here. So here I'm burning, so I'm supposed to be darkening these lighter areas of the image. If it's not working as intensely as you like, well you can keep painting over it or you might dial up your exposure a little bit, but you probably want to take that a bit carefully. So what I'm looking at here is trying to bring in some detail in the mountains behind and so I can just burn over the edges of those mountains so that we're actually getting that detail back in the image. Now of course I'll be destroying the underlying image as I go so just be aware that if you wanted the underlying image back well this dodge and burn effect that I'm doing is actually on the image layer itself and it's making a permanent change to that image layer. So again, as I suggested in the more traditional duotone effect, we'd be much better with this if you were working on a duplicate image and certainly not your original. So you can see how you could craft a different look for your image using the gradient map tool here in Photoshop. It just gives you a lot more flexibility. And of course, having done all of these fixes to the image, you can also just try another gradient map. I'm going to turn this one off and I'll just add another one. New adjustment layer, I'll go down to gradient map, click OK and go and find a different set of colors, for example, to use. So I'm looking at orange and red here. Well, this one's got lots of stops on it. So the first thing I'm going to do is pull all the stops off that I don't want. I really just want two colors. And now I'm going to move these colors into a more correct position and then adjust the point at which they're intersecting. And if you want to adjust this color, just click on the stop and you can click to open the color picker so you could make a darker red out of it. Click on the color picker and then you get access to the yellow and you could choose a slightly different yellow color for it. So we could go even a bit lighter here. Actually, I think darker might be better. So you'll probably find that using the gradient map approach will give you a lot more flexibility in creating these duotones because you can craft a better black and white using a black and white adjustment layer and then craft a curve to give the image a little bit more contrast through the midtones. And of course, you always have the ability to come back in here and actually burn and dodge the underlying image to bring out details or to send some details into the darker areas of the image. I hope that you've enjoyed learning these Photoshop techniques. Let us know what you think in the comments below and give us a thumbs up if you enjoyed this tutorial. Until next time, I'm Helen Bradley for Design Cuts.